So the future promised us flying cars and hoverboards, but what we got instead was much better. Image generating AI. So today we're going to use these tools to design exactly what the world needs right now. Another Metroidvania style video game? So we're going to start the same way most games get designed, by drawing it on a napkin. If you're like me, the only napkins you have lying around are those ones that you get at Christmas time, and they're not exactly that good for drawing on. Rather than just searching for an image, why don't we just generate it using Stable Diffusion? Here I'm running Stable Diffusion locally, using Automatic's Gradio UI. I'll post the links in the description below. Once we have an upscaled version of the image, I just drop it into Photoshop, do a little bit of resizing, and our canvas is ready to go. Baby Prince and the Abyss is the game we're going to be designing today. I think it'd be cool to do something along the lines of Hollow Knight or Ori. Alright, let's start sketching out a main character. We've got to give him a crown, or maybe a bit bigger crown, and a tunic. I thought maybe we could give him like a little scarf or something. So the concept I was thinking is pretty straightforward. A common trope in video games is you make your way through a dungeon, fighting a number of creatures along the way before finally facing the, the boss, creature, dragon, god, whatever it is at the end of the dungeon. So I thought, why don't we look at potentially kind of inverting this whole thing. So for some reason our intrepid hero finds himself falling all the way to the the bottom of the dungeon. But in this case, the lowest levels are just filled with skeletons that the previous hero, perhaps your father, left behind. So let's figure out the story. One day, the prince finds his father, the king slash hero of ages slash king cholesterol, lying dead in the throne room, his ghostly spirit slowly rising from his body. The throne room itself, against all OHNS standards, has a giant hole in the center. More about that later. So while the prince is grieving over the loss of his father, his uncle enters, along with his posse of honor guard. The uncle is like, that my crown. But meanwhile, the prince is like, no, you can't have it. And a fight breaks out. Perhaps this is some sort of like introductory boss fight that introduces you to the control scheme, but is ultimately unwinnable. At the end of the day, one of the honor guards ends up Spartan kicking you down into the deep abyss. You fall for what seems like an eternity into the darkness. You land painfully on the stone floor. Behind you a pile of skeletons, monsters and other creatures that had been vanquished long ago. You lie there with your father's broken sword in front of you. I won't lie, that turned out a little bit darker than I originally intended. Okay, so let's just start by designing this initial scene. Typically with platformer games, you have a number of layers. There's the main collision layer where your character and other enemies are, as well as platforms. Then there are one and more background layers. They're typically overlaid to create kind of a parallax effect. I think it will just layer a number of different skeleton piles, kind of monster skeletons and other things in different layers. So here I'm just going to add a few more details, add some colour to our main character, adding a placeholder for the sword, and then in addition I'm just adding some god rays to the top. This is mainly just to represent some of the light that's bleeding down from above. Let's see, I just brushed in some sort of blurred out foreground elements and then just added some heart containers to represent the current player health. Okay, so now we've got a rough idea of what the scene is that we want to create. So now we can finally start using Stable Diffusion. I've taken a crop of the image of the main character. Along with that we need to write a prompt that details what the character looks like. When you write prompts, it's also good to add some stylistic elements. In this case, I've added things like Trending by Art Station and some artist names. With the other settings, I recommend using a relatively low step count to start with. That way, it'll, the generations will be quicker. For denoising strength, I'm using around 0.5 to 0.6. Once you get a generation that you like, copy it back into the input. The key with using image to image is to do multiple iterations. If you set the denoising strength too high, what you'll find is that it will essentially overwrite the original image. However, if you use a lower strength, maybe around 0.5 to 0.7, what you can do is you can continually move back and slowly get closer and closer to your end goal. Once we find some images that we like, I upscale them using real ESR GAN, using the animate model at 4 times resolution. Once we have a few generations that are closer to what we want, it's time to bring them back into Photoshop and start making some adjustments. What we're trying to do is just nudge ever slowly closer to the image that we have in mind.
Alright, so the next thing we're going to work on is the ground texture. I noticed in one of the generations that it had a nice rock texture, so I decided to crop that and use that as a starting point. When making tiling textures, make sure to check the tiling option. This will ensure the tiles seamlessly fit together. For the backdrop, once again we follow a similar process, simply just running the original image through image to image multiple times until we find a generation that we like. Once we do, then we just send it through again. Once again, this iterative approach is the key to having consistency and control over the output. So to create the god rays, we quickly brush out the shape we want and then run it through image to image. This is a great way to create effects. You can use this to create lightning effects, fire effects, and all kinds of things. Because we created the image on a black background, once we get it back into Photoshop, all we need to do is set the blending mode to screen. I wasn't completely happy with the style of the background, but fortunately with image to image we can run it through again. This time I went with more of a cartoonish effect something that would blend in better with the foreground element. 